overview. Um, a lot of people, when they join eXp, they're like, where are my leads? I thought I was just going to get a bunch somehow. Well, you have to have some sort of online presence to start as your foundation. Now, Emily mentioned making it rain and property boost. And absolutely, you can pay for ads. My goal is to teach you how not to pay for any ads, okay? Um, or, you know, if some, not everybody has a marketing budget. And the power of KB Core is that you can generate leads online for free. Could you also pay for some and maximize it? Sure. Do you have to? No. Okay. So let's talk about your online presence. Um, there are actually four um, social media channels that you need to have, I think, if you want to generate leads online for free. You have to have a Facebook business page, a Google My Business page, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Those are the four that I believe you should have and be working in. Um, it, it might take a, a time for you to build um, that if you don't have any of those, but definitely start with your Facebook business page and Google My Business page. All right. And then maybe add LinkedIn and, and Instagram after that. And we'll talk more about that. I'm going to be pointing you in a direction, in the direction to get more information. This is going to be a lot of uh, me just explaining how to get more because I have so many trainings online, you guys, so many where I really get detailed about nitty gritty things. And I'm going to be pointing you in the direction today for a lot of that. Here's your first lesson. And that is to Google yourself. Okay. So write that down. Google myself. So I'm going to Google myself and see here, uh, I've got my Facebook business page is the first thing that comes up on the left. The second thing that comes up on the right is my Google My Business page. So you create it for free, find it, Google My Business, create it, and you will have this. Okay, so Google yourself and make sure that you dominate the main pages with your name that it's only you as a realtor are on that page so that's your first goal okay um so we're not this is not a social media training though i'm going to be pointing you in that direction though how to get that so next your kb core website functionality there's some things we have to do to it to just make sure it's functional so, you know, making sure agent profile is set up, your website settings are tight and tuned in. Um, you know about your behavior alerts and what they're doing and where your leads are going. Campaigns, campaigns I think are the foundation. They're the most important part of your understanding KV Core. Um, because if you understand what your campaigns are doing, how to trigger them, then you will just, you'll be able to do everything from there in KB Court and feel 100% more confident um, to be able to learn more. Um, so I will tell you, I, I have, um, what's the word? Somebody used, used this expression the other day um, and I was like, oh, that's me. Um, I have dived deep into the shallow end of KB Core. So I can teach you like really all the basics, the nitty gritty, because I forced myself to learn it. There's I would really have scratched the surface. So there's so much that KV Core can do, but if you can get this part, you'll be able to take on the rest of it. The campaigns that we're gonna be talking about today is buyer and seller campaigns, open house campaigns, sphere campaigns, custom campaigns, creating templates and understanding hashtags and triggers. Um, your, besides you know, your front facing, consumer facing website and your, um, you know, marketing autopilot, it's also uh, your smart CRM. So we're going to be talking briefly about adding contacts and a lender and um, automatic phone tasks that the CRM does for you, um, your KV core app and dialer, search alerts and market reports, hashtags, evaluations, and the smart number. And then also your lead engine. This so KV Core is your again your front facing consumer website, your smart CRM, your marketing autopilot for drip campaigns, and your lead generation 
creator. Um, so what we're going to be talking about is just going to be pointing you in the direction is to some lead generating strategies. Okay, so that's that. And then I don't want you to forget though about your sphere. Um, so it's a fact, the numbers don't lie, that you know 50% um, of the sales that happen with realtors are because somebody that that realtor knew referred a friend to them. So a family member, a coworker. So 50% of the business that is done is, is from referrals. 12% is um, somebody that has used you before. Um, and then the rest are, you know, kind of small, like 10% from the for sale sign. That's pretty big, actually. Um, you know, 3% from websites, 4% um, from open house, you know, so it's, you know, you don't forget your sphere. And we're going to talk about how to leverage KB Core for your sphere um, today as well. Um, Lee is saying that she was read in workplace. People have had trouble with campaigns. She's ner nervous to start that. Hopefully I can help you with that. Um, many times it's user error. Um, sometimes KB Core is broken. <laughs> so, but it'll be okay. Um, and then we're going to briefly be talking about consistency. And I'm not going to give you like the whole training. If I gave you everything that I've learned about KB Core, we'd be here for years but I have tons of videos that I am going to point you in the right direction to today. So, so that's that. Um, I'm going to be sharing a document with you and you can get it yourself too. This is the website bit.ly, bit so bit.ly, bit.ly forward slash KV course setup three. Um, I'm also gonna be sharing that with you here in the chat. This is my KV Core setup template. It's grown and evolved over the last, you know, year and a half or so. I think I came up with it about a year and a half ago. Um, all right. So you don't have to worry about this right now. You can just watch. All right, but what I will tell you is when you get this link, you will see this here. This is my KV Core setup template that's really a training template and is gonna guide you to the setup. And I am gonna briefly go over this template with you, but I probably try to do it more towards the end because if I show it all to you now, it will be very confusing, I think, because that's my experience. <laughs> so, what I'd like to just start with is actually digging right in to KB Core. And so I have someone else's um, KB Core I'm into right now, and I like it because it's completely like almost blank. Like she's got nothing, and I love that. <laughs> so, so I'm going to start with a few things. So I am here at my back end. This is, you know, when I log in, this is what I see. Okay. And so I am going to start here at the top. This is the username that she logs in with. This is the smart number. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is her actual website URL and her profile. Um, let's go to profile here. And you will notice. All right. So this is Regina and she had entered in. Um, she did get her profile done, which is great. But I just want to go over some things. You, the way you edit this is you click edit here and she's got her MLS ID. The reason that's important is because um, KB Core will use that MLS ID to identify which listings are your listings so that when you filter for your listings, they will show up. She's got her social media stuff and, and that's great. Here's where she would enter in, she would add a lender if she wanted to add a lender to her KB Core. Um, it's not just gonna automatically be here. I mean, you could look and see if your lender's here, but the way to request um, that your lender be added to KB Core is you actually contact EXP Realty Tech Support, not KB Core Support, but you email support at exprealty.com 
and you say, here's my lender's name, here's my lender's email address, their phone number, and the company they're with, and please add them to my KB Core. And then they will send you an email back saying when they've done that, and then you can add them here. If you want them, basically what that's gonna do, if you add them here, they're gonna be your primary lender. So any lead you get, they will also get. And that can be really advantageous if they're a good lender and they like online leads and they're great at converting, they will help you convert, so just FYI. Okay, you want to have some sort of bio that's a little small one, but it's cute. And then she's got her signature here, and that's fine. That's all you need. Emily said, when I add a lender, how is that lender notified? Okay, so that's a good question. Um, what happens, you want to tell your lender, you know, by the way, I'm adding you to KB Core, and you're going to get an email. So basically what's going to happen is, is once KB Core sets them up, you're going to get an email that they're in. And then they're gonna get some sort of email that allows them, that gives them login information. And they'll have like a dashboard that's similar. Um, like, uh, you know, it's not, they're not gonna have everything that we have. They're just gonna have basically a smart CRM type thing of just seeing the leads that have been assigned to them by people. And it should tell them who, who the agent is, because maybe they have a couple agents they're working with that have KB Core. And it will tell them, you know, all the information about the lead, like whether they're a buyer, what their phone number is, and their email address. And then, no, the lenders don't pay for it. You just add them in. You just add them in as a, you know, and then hopefully they'll, like, sponsor your lunch and learns or, you know, pay for Zillow leads for you or something. I don't know. No, they don't pay for it. You're doing it for them. It's something that you get to do for your lender. Um, my lender will send me a link to add them. Um, you, well, all you have to do here is you, you, you at, tell KB Core, you tell EXP Realty Support, you email support at exprealty.com, you say, this is my lender's name, their website, their email address, their phone number, please add them and let me know when you've added them, then they will. And then what happens is um, you will get notes. Uh, you, you will get notes from your lender that say, uh, that c come in and it'll say, you know, Brandon Redding, for example, added a note. And it'll say for so and so, and then it'll show what the note is, and he'll, he's, he'll say something like, "Hey, I called them. We scheduled an appointment for tomorrow at 10:30. We're going to meet at my office." Or, "Hey, I called them. They're they're not ready to do anything yet. They they do want me to keep in touch, so I I I scheduled um, a call. I'm going to call them in two weeks. You know, and he'll he'll tell me what he's doing. We're still in the agent profile, and I'm going to go to settings. So this is something I want to talk to you about." KB Core will create for you automatic call tasks. So it will create daily call tasks for you. And you can choose who, who it's going to create call tasks from. So the way it's on default is that every day it will create call tasks for you for the following. Your prospects, anybody who's in your KB Core system as a prospect, anybody who's in there as a new lead, and anyone in there who's an active lead. Now, I expand that. I want it to create call tasks for my sphere as well. I want it to create call tasks for anybody who's my client as well, just in case. <laughs> I mean, again, these are, these are random and um, call tasks it creates. And of course, Mari and me call my clients. I just want it to pop up um, just in case. <laughs> All right, just to keep it in the loop. Also, people who are currently under contract and definitely those who have closed. So I'm going to ask it to create call tasks for me. Do I have to do every task? No. But it's going to come up for me as, hey, call this person. Now, I, it's on the toggle here that says auto create calls each day. And I can also have it choose to create calls for me on the weekends too. It's, it's not that way right now. And right now, the default is that it's going to create 10 calls for you a day. Okay. Now, for your new leads that come in there, um, because the way this is set up, KB Core is already automatically going to start creating these for you. But we've just added some. And so you can increase. You could say, well, I only want it to create five calls a day for me, or 10, or 15, or 20, or 50. You decide. And then you can also choose what time an email will get sent to you that says, hey, here's who you're gonna be calling today, okay? You can also turn on these toggles 
if you don't care, you know, you're like, I'm okay if somebody, you know, if I cre have call tasks created for me on President's Day, that's all right with me, you know, for example. And then you're gonna save changes. So that's thing one. Now, where those call tasks are gonna go is up here where it says tasks. Um, you will see these call tasks or any other cat tasks that have been assigned to you based on um, campaigns or tasks that you manually created for yourself, they're gonna show up here. Now, any tasks that show that they're due today and you don't do them, they're gonna go into your past due section. Anything that goes into your past due section today, within seven days, those tasks will disappear as if they, were, they never happened, okay? So just be aware of that. So either due to tasks, or snooze them, you can snooze them for 24 hours, or schedule manual tasks, or just let them go and not worry about it. Those are your options. Now, that brings me to the KV Core app. The KV Core app is something you can download, and I'm gonna try to show it to you the best I can here. Okay, it's, so that's what it looks like. This is the app when you open it up, and it's just got my inbox. And I can also see like any activity from my dashboard. I can also see any notifications like new lead notifications or messages. I can also go here to my contacts. And then if I click on a contact, um, you know, I can see what's going on with them. I can see their, their profile. And if I have their number, I can call them or email them. I can even set up search alerts for them here, right from my app, okay? All right, there's also a dialer. I love the dialer, okay? The dialer um, shows me all my overdue calls that I need to make, so I can click here on overdue calls, and I can just go through the list. And if I hit this one, for example, and um, so there it is, and hit profile, okay? Then I can click dial now. The number comes up on my iPhone. I can just dial and then I'll call them and I'll, I'll be calling directly from my cell phone. And then after I'm finished, um, it will pop up a window that says, you know, did I contact him or did I leave a voicemail? I can check the box. I can write a note. I can schedule a task, whatever. And then at the end of my call session, um, I go here to dialing summary. And it shows me, you know, this is how many people you, you call, you called a total of, you know, nine people, you contacted one, you left a message for six, you had two bad numbers, whatever the case may be. And it's really great. You can also dial by hashtag or dial by like new leads or activity screen, stream or inactive leads, today's calls that, that it created for you. I really love the app. Um, it's changed my life, actually. <laughs> it's helped me do better calling my sphere. It's also linked to the Open House app, which we'll talk about, and you can also switch to the web version. Um, so instead of using the KB Core app, you can use KB Core dashboard from the web on your phone. So that's, I highly recommend that. Now, somebody's asking, if you call from the dialer, does it show your cell? Yes, if you call from the dialer using the app, it will show from your cell phone number. If you call from the dialer using your computer, it will show from the smart number. All right, Dave, what if I belong to two MLSs? In the way it works with KB Core is you have to have an actual additional KB Core website. And what happens is you go into um, the marketplace here on the back on the dashboard and you can sign up. Um, It's this. It's this EXP templated website add-on. So it's an additional website that for $12 a month that you're gonna have for your additional MLS. You'll still access it from the same dashboard. Your same, all your contacts will be in one place. All your campaigns will work for both websites, but you have two front-facing domains with two different MLSs with different MLS data on them, okay? 
on the learning portal. Here's learning portal. You click on learning portal. A lot of people don't use this. They message me instead. <laughs> but go to learning portal. And um, I don't know how these little black lines got there. But on learning portal, you're going to click get help. And then you're going to click KB Core Platform. And then you um, are going to type in whatever you want. So let's say you are interested in the dialer. Type in dialer. And then here is the results. We've got mobile app dialer, KBC app. And it gives you what the features are, how to dial a list, you know, how, everything, how to use the dialer. Okay. And it, and it, um, it really spells it out. <laughs> all right, so all the information you need here is here. Now, that's just the dialer. There's a lot more to the app itself. So if you wanna go back and see KB Core app, it tells you here is the KB Core mobile app features and basic guide, and it tells you all about it. You can push, you could, um, sorry, you can, Click on these links and it's going to take you to a whole, the whole topic of using the mobile app and um, a specific feature. So let's say you want to learn how to manage your listings from the mobile app. This particular article is going to tell you all about it, mobile listings CRM and everything you need to know about it. And it'll tell you everything about how to find it in your Google Play or or your Apple store and how to download it and everything you need to know. We're gonna go to Marketing Autopilot, sorry, Marketing Autopilot, and we're gonna go to the Behavioral Automation. And now this is important to understand and learn too, because a lot of people are like, I don't know what my KB Core is doing, it's doing things and I don't know what it's doing and it makes me uncomfortable. So this is the question I hope to answer. Okay, so here's Behavioral Automation. Let me take a minute to explain this. It took me actually a while to figure this out myself. And I think it's partly because I move fast and I just skip over things and I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now I understand what's happening because I've taken the time to learn. Okay, behavior automations. This basically spells it out. If you just read it, you'll understand. But I'm gonna just tell it to you. So what KB Core does is Beyond just a campaign that you've set up, so this has nothing to do with campaigns, but beyond a campaign you've set up, um, KB Core does other things for you. Uh, you can, you know, set up search alerts so somebody will get listings in a specific zip code, for example. Um, you can set up market reports so people get their home valuation. Those things will happen automatically. Like, so for example, if a seller requests their home valuation on your website, they're gonna start getting periodically every month their home valuation every month, automatically. Um, if somebody looks at a property on your website, they're gonna start getting similar properties sent to them automatically, okay? So those are some automatic things that are gonna happen beyond a campaign that you set up. However, there's, other things so it's like wait there's more and it's these behavior alerts so depending on what your contact is doing on your website kb core will respond in kind the way it's automatically set up is that your sphere your active leads your prospects and your new leads are going to get a a text message or if there's no phone number for them, they're gonna get an email. Now, where do the automatic text messages um, from either these behavior automations or from campaigns, where do those text message messages come from? Do they come from your cell phone number? No, they come from the smart number. We will talk about that. Um, but they're gonna get a text message. If there's no phone number for them, then they're gonna get an email. And the way it's set up right now, these four types of contacts are gonna get these things. And here's what they're gonna get and when. Down here you can see, if a lead revisits the site after 14 days, they're gonna get this text message. It just says, 
hey, you know, Bob, it looks like you're doing a few home searches. I'll research your property alerts and update for you anything specific you're looking for. Some people I've seen on, K on KB Core discussion are all upset, like, well, I'm not, I don't know if they get that text message and I don't know if you're going to update their search alerts. Don't worry, KB Core is doing it for you. <laughs> it's updating the search alert based on what that person looked at. Now, you are just, it's asking a question and if, and if they respond back, great. Now, if you just talked to this person yesterday and they get a text message from you, don't be embarrassed. They're going to think like, wow, what a great follow-up job that agent is doing. <laughs> okay. Just let KB Core do what it does. All right. Okay. So that's how you can see what's being sent to you. And it's being sent in these particular instances. If they don't get a text because there's no phone number, they're going to get an email and you can see what it looks like. All right. The only way to turn, you can, you can turn these off for a specific contact. So if you go into a specific contact, so let's say you've talked to a contact and you definitely don't want any automatic things happening, you can turn off the behavior alerts for that specific contact inside their contact page. But if you wanna turn it off for just everybody, you have to like turn off the whole toggle here and make it gray, but I would not recommend that. That's, this is the power of KB Core helping you convert taking care of your leads for you that you're not doing a good job of taking care of because there's too much to do. All right. Now these, this little toggle here is telling you that you're going to get an alert um, when these things happen. So it's going to give you, it's going to say, Hey, um, a lead Bob Jones visited your site after 14 days and it's going to send you a text message. And I'll, I'll also include in that text message, whether or not KB Core sent your contact a message or did not. It'll say, lead revisited the site after 10 days, message was sent or contact was made or, or no contact was made. It was, it's like, um, it will just update you. If you have so many leads in here because you're just, you know, you know, funneling a ton of Zillow leads or something and you're just overwhelmed and you don't want to get those text messages and it's giving you anxiety, then you can turn off these alerts for yourself. All right, somebody's got a message. Nope, you can't change the messages or add messages. The only way you can do that is through campaigns, but you can't change these messages. Don't worry if it doesn't sound like you. you they don't know what you sound like, okay? You know, it's, it's fine, all right? I promise. Okay, just let it do what it does. I, I just, you gotta trust me on that. All right. So that's behavior autom automation. Now let's talk about campaigns because remember I said that was the foundation of what you got to know, I think. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go here to start a campaign and we're inside the marketing autopilot right now. She's got nothing. It's just a beautiful blank slate. <laughs> let's fix that. We're going to start by just adding some, some campaigns that she needs. Now, I'm gonna go fast, you guys, because of time, but I'm gonna point you in a direction where you can see this again and you can get a more full explanation, okay? But those of you who are quicker uh, with technology or just have done a lot of this before, you won't need that, but. So here we are, this is a KB Core library of campaigns. Down here is your library with maybe nothing. I can go here to this drop down menu and I can start adding campaigns. The first one I'm going to add is this open house campaign. Then I'm going to add a default camp, two default campaigns. I'm going to add the conversion default seller campaign. I'm going to add the conversion default buyer campaign. I'm going to add this little guy. Um, default homeowner sphere campaign and default prospect homeowner campaign. All right, so here's the basic automation, uh, basic campaigns. I'm gonna go through these quickly. And again, I'm gonna point you into a direction where I talk about it more in depth, but your open house campaign, 
This is going to work if you have the Open House app that, yes, is linked to your KB Core app. It's a separate app, though, but it's linked. And um, you can get, you know, switch back and forth to it. And, um, and what you can do is on any mobile device, so a tablet, iPad, or a phone, kind of weird on a phone, but on a tablet or iPad or phone, you can have the Open House app and ask people to register at your open house using the app. And it's actually quite nice. Um, if you go here to learning portal and then go to get help and then go to KB Core, type in the open house app and it will tell you all about how to use that app, the directions for it. It's a really nice article, a really good support article that's gonna help you do it. Um, but what happens is any leads that come in, what's interesting to me, is people, when I've given them my tablet to, hey, please register, because we're gonna want your feedback about this listing. People are like, oh, okay. Do, 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 do. But if I have a piece of paper there on the thing and I ask them that, they're much more resistant. <laughs> and so you get a lot more leads, actually, when people do it on, on a tablet. It's very strange. But, but what happens is when you get these leads from the tablet, um, or from the open house app, it's going to go and they're automatically going to get this campaign because their source is going to be called open house. They're going to be called a prospect and that's going to trigger this campaign. To see what's happening in this campaign, you can click on it and say, okay, in four hours after they come into my system, they're going to get a text message and it says this, you know, pleasure meeting you at the open house, blah, blah, blah. Um, then on day one, they're going to get an email and it says this, you know, thanks for visiting me this weekend at the open house, blah, blah, blah. So you can see all this and what it is. Um, if you don't like something in here, you can just click the little X. It will delete it out of the campaign. You can also add new actions like new emails or call tasks or text messages. As long as you've created those templates in templates, as long as you have those templates in there, then you, you, know, you do that by adding a template here. And we're gonna go over that a little bit so you'll see that how this works. Then you're gonna be able to you know, modify a campaign if you want to. But I would honestly tell you, just let KB Core do what it does, okay? And so I'm gonna activate this campaign. All right, so next I wanna talk about the conversion default seller campaign. Now, this is only seven touches, and it's over like um, 365 days, so a whole year, and you're like, only seven touches? Well, gee, that's not enough. Well, you have to know a couple things. Um, they've requested their home valuation if they're a seller lead, so that means they're also going to get their home valuation and market update for their zip code every month. So that's one thing they're automatically going to get from you. Also, they're going to get a couple behavior automations from KB Core, either, either text messages or emails now and then too. So um, they're going to be getting those things. So that's step one. Hopefully, you're, you're also doing other things for yourself to try to convert your leads. Maybe you're sending like a weekly or a monthly newsletter. Maybe you're trying to call them. Maybe you've sent them some snail mail because you got their address. Um, maybe you tried knocking on their door. So there's other things that you're gonna be doing, right? Okay, so that's that. Now notice that this campaign is gonna start when the status is a new lead for a seller, okay? That's when it's gonna start, just automatically. Um, there's this other campaign called Default Prospect Homeowner. Default Prospect homeowner. <laughs> this is a campaign also for sellers. It's going to start when the status is prospect for a seller. A lot of times when you get seller leads, for whatever reason, they're not always identified as new leads by KB Core. Sometimes they're identified as prospects, even if there's a phone number and even if there is a email address that's valid. KB Corporate will just call them a prospect. And so in that case, those people that are called prospect sellers are not going to get your conversion default seller campaign because that's designed for new lead types. 
this particular campaign is designed for prospect seller types. So now you're just going to activate this to ensure that your default, um, that your prospect sellers are also getting a campaign. It's a little different type of campaign. It's fine. I have them both running. Um, so I've got my conversion default seller campaign running. I've got my default prospect homeowner campaign. Again, it's a default for seller leads whose prospect um, status, I'm sorry, whose status is prospect. So it tells you exactly here what the description is and when it's gonna start and who it's for, okay? Now, let's talk about the default buyer campaign. This is the most dominant campaign. It's gonna run over everything. <laughs> and um, here's, it's, it's designed for a, anybody who looks at one of your properties um, from your, you know, on your website, looks at a property and they're a new lead. Um, they're automatically gonna be a new buyer lead and they're gonna get this campaign. Now, it, this is also true if they come in using a call capture code, they're also gonna be identified as a new lead buyer, even if you didn't mean for them to be a buyer lead. <laughs> they're gonna get this buyer campaign. Um, anybody that, you know, there's squeeze pages and there's also landing pages. Anybody that comes in from a landing page is automatically gonna be identified as a new lead buyer, no matter what. So there are some things you can do with hashtags and triggering campaigns, but over the last two years since I've been using KB Core, I have found that to be unreliable with those two channels as far as call capture and landing pages and trying to use the hashtags to trigger a different campaign. It doesn't work. It works great on squeeze pages. Great. But anyway, I just want you to know this is a very, um, uh, whatchamacallit, dominant campaign. Now, it's fine. It, you can see what it says here. The first thing, like, hey, you know, I forgot to ask after your business site, are you just shopping? You know, are you looking for something in particular? You know, it's, and then it will have, hey, this is Sylvia Dana from EXP Realty is what it will have. And they'll get a text message from the smart number, not your cell phone number. Um, and, and then three days later, it's like, hey, do you own a home locally? If you do, you know, click this to get your instant home value. Um, it's fine. I used to um, tell people to delete this because a lot, I, I heard a lot of, you know, people complaining about it. But since then, you know, last, you know, couple months, I'm like, that's stupid. Don't delete that. Leave that. I don't know what got into me. Because um, I think I was just hearing other people's complaining about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, those poor people. I see what they're saying. <laughs> but but it's, it says quick property tour. And it says, hey, I've got some free time on my calendar. Do you want to get together this weekend and look at properties? And I, and I used to like take that off. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be available this weekend. And I don't know if I want to meet you. <laughs> well, you know what? If you're booked this weekend and you don't know this person yet, and they reply to you and say, yes, they want to look at properties. Well, great. Start the conversation. You know, decide how you can, when you can help them and figure out what they need. Um, so I leave this now. I don't know what I was thinking before. Anyway, it's all good stuff. And again, it's only this many touches in 100 days. But don't forget, they're also going to be getting properties sent to them pretty frequently from KV Core. Um, so they're going to hear from you. All right. Yes, Sierra. KV Core will let two campaigns run at the same time. And I'm going to teach you how to prevent a campaign from running at the same time one of your other campaigns is running. Um, one way that you can help that is um, like this conversion default buyer campaign is already set up like that, um, where it says always run yes or no. No, don't always run is how, <laughs> you know, you can, you can tell it. Don't always run if if you don't want it to, um, meaning, yeah, you, meaning you can prevent this. This is saying you could prevent that lead, this campaign from running in certain instances, and I'm gonna go over that. Um, I've got this handy little document here, and you guys will get this, so don't worry. You guys ha will have access to this. We're gonna create a couple of templates for campaigns. The first um, template we're gonna create 
It's a task template. Okay, so this is like a task template is, is something that it's telling you, the agent, to do something. That's a task template that says, hey, Sylvia, set up a marker report for this person. Another example would be like, you know, hey, Jim, write a handwritten note card to this person. That would be an example of a task template. And so you can create your own task templates. So here I'm going to go, uh, I'm in templates in the campaign library. I'm going to go at add template. And, I, there, you know, there's an email template I could add, a text message template I could create, or a task template. I'm going to go to task template. And I'm just going to paste these words, set up market report. There it is. I just created a task template. Super simple. And we'll get to that in a minute. There's another one we're going to do, and it's what's your phone number? This is an email template. So a lot of times you will get, you know, um, leads that don't have phone numbers and you're like oh my gosh i don't have a phone number what i'm gonna do well why didn't you ask them what their number is <laughs> that's an idea so we're gonna add this email template and you know you can use whatever kind of language you want but these are my words so i'm gonna take what's your phone number and that's the name of the template um this is the subject line the same thing Another thing I really want to tell you when you, um, you know, create these templates, sometimes when you copy text from a different program like a Microsoft Word or Google Docs or your notes program and paste it inside this, you know, this body area, it, it might cause problems with the way that it previews or the way that it comes through when it's sent. So I just recommend when you do that, copy this text that you just pasted in there and use the paragraph styles and just select paragraph so that it just changes the style to something KB Core likes. Okay, I'll go over that again in a minute, but I wanna talk about this little guy. This is called a merge tag. I already have it set up in this campaign document that I'm working from right here. I already have it set up to know how KB Core likes it, but this little merge tag is something that I can put in that will draw data from a lead and fill it in for us. So in this case, I want KB Core to address this person by their name, whoever's getting this email. And so I'm gonna say, hi, so-and-so, I'm gonna say, insert merge tag, it's this little sun that's right here, this little sun, and it's gonna, I'm gonna go to lead and first name, ta-da! So there's this, it's gonna say, hi, Sue, or hi, Bob, or let's say you only have an email address and, and the email address didn't validate correctly. So it's just like cool guy 19. So it's gonna say, hi, cool guy 19, but whatever, at least it's something. And it just says, do you have a real estate re question? Reply back with your best phone number. I'd like to assist you with your real estate needs. And then the signature for, you know, whatever signature you have in your agent profile is automatically by default gonna be on there. And now we're just gonna add that template. Isn't that nice? Now I'm going to add another, um, two other actually intro emails for two different custom campaigns I'm going to show you. And these will just, you don't have to use these custom campaigns, but they might give you ideas for your own custom campaigns. But you can do them, you can, you can use them. So um, this particular um, campaign, or sorry, this particular email is going to be the first email for a campaign that I call my Facebook buyer campaign. I'm going to go, I'm here at templates. I'm going to go add template, email template. And remember, I'm going to copy the text in there like so. I'm, I'm going to um, take the name out of it. It's called Facebook buyer intro email. This is the subject line. It's about the property you viewed on Facebook with a smiley face. Okay. And notice, you know, I copied this text in here. I'm going to select it all and I'm going to choose the paragraph style just to put it in the right style that Katie Core likes. So they just pasted this copy from a different program. Anyway, notice it says, hi, first name. So it's going to fill in their name. And it says, I noticed you viewed and it shows the last property they viewed. Okay, so that's going to fill in. So it's going to show, you know, I noticed you viewed 123 Main Street posted on Facebook the other day. Okay, 
I'm the, I'm a local real estate agent and I'd like to answer any inquiries for you about the properties you viewed. Are you thinking about buying or selling a home soon? I'm here to help. Smiley face. Thanks. It also says in the subject line about the property viewed on Facebook. So what this custom campaign is doing now, I don't have to have a custom campaign for somebody who checks out one of my properties that I posted on Facebook. It, I don't have, they'll just get the regular default buyer campaign and that is perfectly fine. But the point of a custom campaign is to create some familiarity. You know, you're trying to create familiarity and the more you can create familiarity, the better luck you're gonna have at converting that lead, right? So this, when they get this subject line about the property you viewed on Facebook, it'll be like, oh, oh, okay, um, I, I did that and that's what this is about, you know? And then it'll even have the address in here and it'll just ask the question, are you thinking about buying, or home or, buying a home or selling? You know, so, so anyway, that's, that's what we're gonna be doing there. And then there's one more fun one and it's probably my favorite and it's called, the seller share intro email. Now, this one is for when your seller posts their property um, and they say, hey, you know, all my Facebook friends and my coworkers and my people I go to church with and, um, you know, um, whatever, family members, check out my listing. I'm excited for the next chapter of our lives you know, who do you know who might want to buy my house? When you, when that person um, promotes their own listing, you're going to get a camp, we're, they're going to get a campaign called seller share. So we're going to meet some new people and put them in our database with this campaign. And so that's what we're going to get prepared for here. And we're going to paste this copy in here like so. It's called seller share intro email and about your friend's real estate listing is the subject line and then we're going to select this and do so basically it says i noticed your i noticed you viewed your friend's listing on my website the other day i'm the realtor and i need your feedback what did you think about the presentation of the listing how about the price who do you know who might be interested in purchasing it if you have any real estate questions or know someone who might please let me know i'm here to help thanks okay. all right that's a good one and I made this big, so now, <laughs> and then add the template. One more. And it is the sphere intro email. Sphere intro email. I'm gonna do this fast. Okay, I'm just gonna paste this little baby in there. Sphere, oops. Spear intro email is the name of it. The subject line is checking in with you. Boop. Boop. Select and pair. So this is basically saying, hey, I'm checking in with you. How are you doing? Do you want to catch up sometime? And I'm sending you a market report, by the way. All right, that's for your sphere. The first campaign we're going to build is the Facebook buyer campaign. And then we will build the seller share campaign. And when I explain this to you, you might not completely get it. It might be still kind of Greek to you until we put the whole thing together. And so just sit tight with me here for a minute. So here we are on some of our campaigns that we, um, we downloaded and activated. Gotta make sure they're activated. And we're gonna start, we're gonna go to our conversion default buyer campaign, and we're gonna use this as a skeleton. Okay, we're gonna use this as a template, basically, for a new campaign. So here's our conversion default buyer campaign, and what I wanna do is I just wanna make a copy of this. So I'm gonna make a copy of it, and I'm gonna modify it. So the way I do that is I go here to clone. You see, conversion default buyer, and I'm gonna clone it. So oh, I'm just making a copy and I do have to zoom out because it's too there. All right, so I'm gonna just clone it. So I'm gonna hit next. It is for buyers. So I'm just gonna hit next, next, and clone. Okay. And now we just made a copy. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is gonna be our Facebook buyer campaign. So this is for any. This is gonna be designed for a squeeze page and we're gonna get into that next, don't you worry. 
This is going to be designed for a squeeze page that we create that's going to be either a list of properties, like a list of open houses maybe in a certain zip code, or maybe it's just a single property. Maybe it's one of our own listings or another agent's listing that we're promoting. So any properties we're promoting, we create a squeeze page and we put it out there on Facebook. This is the campaign that's designed for anybody that sees a property from Facebook. Now again, do we have to have a custom campaign for Facebook leads? No, they can just get the regular conversion default buyer campaign. But remember why we want a custom campaign? We wanna build familiarity, okay? So that, to, to help us convert better, hopefully. All right, so that's the point. Now, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new action here. Um, and the action we're gonna add is we're gonna add a Facebook buyer intro email. Okay, so we're adding a new email and we're just gonna call it the same thing, Facebook buyer intro email. Okay, and I just wanna double check and make sure, yep, that's the one. And then I can have time unit. I can decide, well, do I want them to get this, um, this email immediately or six hours later or the next day? The problem is, I mean, I don't know when they're gonna, you know, check out this property on Facebook. Is it going to be at one o'clock in the morning? Um, <laughs> is it going to be eight o'clock at night? At four o'clock in the I don't know. I'm just going to say one day. Okay, one day means they're going to get it the next day after the lead comes in, and I'm going to add that. That's up to you to decide. Now, what's going to happen on day one? They're first going to if there's a phone number, they're going to get a text message. I'm going to leave it there. It's fine. I don't care. Then they're also going to get the Facebook buyer intro email. They're going to get on day three, do you own a home locally, blah, 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 blah. But remember that what's your phone number email? And also remember we talked about how KB Core creates automatic call tasks for you. Well, when you get a new lead, you know, if you see that it's come in and there's a phone number, you should probably just call it <laughs> right away. But um, I'm going to put a task in here for you, um, for ourselves in this case. Um, and that is going to be call task to tell you to call this person. But if there's no phone number, it's going to tell you or send that email. Okay. So here I'm going to add an action. It's going to be a call task. So all this is hopefully teaching you how you can modify your own campaigns. So we're going to add a call task and, it, and we're just going to name it call or send what's your number email, okay? And we're gonna select the 10 but call and leave a voicemail. I always leave a voicemail and then I text when I call people. Um, and we're gonna do this on day two. So this will be a task that comes up for you. And it's gonna say, hey, give this person a call. Or if you don't have their number, send them the what's your number email. Then finally, on day 100, this campaign, they're gonna get the last thing and then that's it. So I wanna do something different and I wanna just, I wanna change their status to sphere. I wanna put them in my sphere now so that they're always gonna get my like, up, you know, continued newsletters and things. They're just gonna be part of my tribe. I don't care if they don't wanna be there, they can unsubscribe, but I'm making them my family now. So I'm going to add the action of status. And I'm gonna just change, say, um, change status to sphere. And it says change status to sphere. And that's what's automatically gonna happen. It's just, it's just gonna come up as like almost a task for you, letting you know what's happening, but it's gonna happen and you don't have to do it. The system is gonna do it. So I'm gonna do this on day 101, which is the day after they get their last email. And you'll notice this is day 101, change status to sphere. This, and then the method is the status is going to get changed from the, syst the system's going to do it for the contact. Now we're not done. We, we modified a campaign, but now we got to do some more things. Okay, so we're going to go and edit this campaign. Now the way that this is set up right now is that this campaign is going to run if it's a new buyer lead. And we don't want this campaign to run if it's a new buyer lead because we already have a campaign for a new buyer lead. This is a special campaign. This is a custom campaign. 
this campaign we're going to set up to run only if it sees a hashtag that we're going to create. And the hashtag is Facebook buyer. So this campaign now will run when it sees attached to the lead a hashtag and it's going to be Facebook buyer. We're going to go into this part in a bit. Okay, next, don't worry. We're going to name this campaign Facebook buyer campaign and we're just going to give it the description. Say activates when Facebook buyer tag is present. Okay, and next. And update. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and make sh this active. So what we've done is we've set up a Facebook buyer campaign. It's going to run if it sees the Facebook buyer hashtag come in with a lead, um, and then this will run. However, we want to prevent conversion default buyer campaign from also running. Okay, we don't want them both to run. We've designed this custom campaign to treat this particular person special and to create that familiarity. We don't wanna annoy them by running two campaigns that are basically the same, all right? So, um, all right, so we're gonna go, this is what we're gonna do. We've created a custom campaign. This custom campaign is designed for a new lead buyer that has the Facebook buyer hashtag. So what we need to do is we need to go to our default buyer campaign. This is the important part. And Sierra, you asked this earlier too, like can two campaigns run at once? Yes, they can, unless you tell one not to run. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna do. So here we are back at our conversion default buyer campaign. This is the one that's gonna run for any buyer who checks out a pro any lead that is a brand new lead who's never registered on your website before. Somebody who's not registered on your website before, they, they looked at a property on your website somehow because they came in from a squeeze page or something and now, now they're on your website. They have registered because they want to see more properties and you get them as a new buyer lead. Okay, anybody like that, whether you post it on Facebook or wherever is going to be like this. So this custom campaign we created, Facebook buyer, we created that one so that if a hashtag Facebook buyer comes in with it, they'll get that campaign. However, we still need to prevent this one from running at the same time. Here's how we do that. We go to edit and notice it says to start the campaign when status is new lead. And if you go through the next, it says it's designed for a buyer. So when it's a new lead for a buyer, that's when this is gonna run. So what we need to do here is we need to add a trigger, okay? The trigger is gonna say, sure, go ahead and run if you're a new lead for a buyer. You can also run if the hashtag is not Facebook buyer. So now we just told it, yeah, go ahead and run. If the status is new lead for buyer and the hashtag is not Facebook buyer, then yes, go ahead and run. But Facebook buyer tag there, you can't run, okay? All right, you can't run. So here's what it looks like. So it says start when status is new lead, but the Facebook buyer tag is not there. Okay, so now what we did is we just prevented that from running. So let's put this in action now. Okay, let's look at what this looks like and hopefully it will work. <laughs> Sometimes baby core is slow, but it will do it. I believe in it. Okay, so let's, what does this look like in real life? Okay, so we're gonna create a squeeze page. We're gonna go to our lead engine. And now is the moment you've all been waiting for. We're gonna go to IDX squeeze page and here's our drop down. And remember somebody early asked, what if I have two MLSs? And if you had two MLSs and then paid an extra $12 a month for an additional website, you'd have two websites here to choose from. <laughs> we just have this one and we're gonna start building. 
And we've got here the multi-property squeeze pages. These are like where you're going to create your curated lists of properties based on certain criteria. So whether it's price ranges or number of bedrooms or open houses, reduced properties, properties with pools, whatever. Okay, that's this, this page. Then we've got single property squeeze pages. And we've got seller squeeze pages. And we've got market reports. Let me go here to, um, I know this person that I'm working with, Gina, she has a couple of listings. So we're gonna do a single property squeeze page for one of her listings. We're gonna go here to listings um, and we can filter. And we can do like, you can see all the listings and search for a listing there. You can say, you know, my listings, agency listings, so other EXP agents. But we're gonna do my listings, which is for listings, and we're gonna apply the filter. And here we go. Oh, that's lovely. Hopefully it's not pending. Well, I mean, for our sake, not hers. <laughs> it's not, okay. So um, here's the MLS ID. What I usually do when I'm setting these up for people, um, I go here to I start a new notes and I put the MLS ID here and then I'll put like the address. And I do this for myself too. Um, and if it's my own listing or if it's the person's own listing, I'll create a hashtag for their listing. So, and I'm gonna, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Right now I might be speaking Greek to you and that's okay. Um, but I'm going to, So I just created a hashtag 61 Baker Dairy. I'll get into that in a minute. All right. So we're going to go here back to our lead engine and we're going to go back to our squeeze pages. Okay. I'm going to grab my little MLS ID here. I'm going to go to single property. And then here I have some choices about my source. This is where you're going to decide where am I going to post this particular squeeze page. Am I gonna post on Facebook or Google or LinkedIn? Um, do I not care? And I'm just gonna put general. <laughs> the reason that you'd wanna put a source is just so that in your business analytics here, you can see where most of, you're getting most of your online leads when you post squeeze pages. That would be the reason. So here you can put you know, FB for Facebook for short, or you can spell out Facebook, but no matter what you do, Pick one, FB or Facebook, choose one. We'll do FB for the source. That's where we're gonna post this link. Um, remember, we're gonna, this is for our Facebook buyer campaign. So with that, um, I am going to put the, copy the listing ID, because that's where that goes. And now, this is where hashtags come in. For the purpose of KB Core, hashtags aren't like the kind you see on social media where you do like hashtag, EXP Realty Proud or hashtag Realtor Life. Okay, that's not what these hashtags are. These hashtags have a couple different purposes. Number one, they're for categorizing your leads and organizing, sorting your leads. And the other reason that you use a hashtag is to trigger a specific campaign. So the first hashtag we're going to put in here is for our custom campaign. We wanna trigger a specific campaign. We're gonna put Facebook buyer is that trigger. So Facebook buyer, that hashtag is gonna do what? It's gonna trigger our Facebook buyer campaign because we set it up like that. We created a campaign and we activate it. We <laughs> have a campaign that's in there that says, go ahead and start. If you have the hashtag Facebook buyer on you, start this campaign. Okay, if, if this were not her own listing, I would not bother doing a hashtag for an address. But if it's my own, or her own rather, I am gonna add a hashtag, and why? Not to, not to um, trigger a certain campaign, but to organize the leads so that I can see, you know, what are all the leads I got from doing any kind of single property squeeze page for, for this particular seller? What are all the leads I got? 
and how you know I want to find them all by searching for that hashtag because what if we drop the price five thousand dollars and then we say hey you liked this property and guess what we just dropped the price or hey you like this property we just sold it hey you like this property and we were off the market but now we're back on the market so you want to find those people maybe so that's why i put a hashtag in there in the early days <laughs> kb core um this was like if if somebody somebody could look at like two or three pictures of a property and then they'd have be asked to register um, but now what this is doing is it's going to let them look at two, uh, it's going to look at, they can look at a property, a whole property and all the pictures before they're required to register. Um, they could look at, you know, whole property. And then when they go to look at the second property, that's when, when they're going to be asked to register. Um, so for this single property, I'm going to say immediate. I want them to immediately have to register. And that's just me. You can do it however you want. You can test it. You can do different ones, ones that, you know, give them the default two views optional before they have to register or one or three, you can test this. But for now, I'm gonna do immediate and I'm gonna generate the link. Now, I'm only gonna say this once and I have it in my videos a billion times when I talk about, <laughs> when I talk about squeeze pages, but you'll notice there are two links that are created, a direct link and a short link. These links are exactly the same it's just that the short link is a shorter version. Um, but I want to show you what this long link looks like. It tells the story of the squeeze page. It says, hey, this squeeze page was built with this domain. And it's for this MLS ID. And it's for this source, Facebook. And the hashtag that was added is Facebook buyer and 6100 Baker Theory. Okay. And the timing that you can view this is just one time before you have to register. Okay. So it tells the whole story, but I only have to save this short link. Now, the other thing I want to tell you is when we get off of this whole squeeze page thing, and uh, if we go to do something else in KB Core, we're going to lose this forever and ever. So if we ever want to use this same link again in the future for some reason, and we don't want to have to go and recreate the same exact thing again, you want to save that short link somewhere. And we will talk about that too today. Okay, so then what I like to do is I just like to put the URL in and I like to you know, look at it and, and make sure it worked. Okay, so there it is. All right, but now before I go on, I want to show you that you also have to paste it. So I've had people say, oh, I created a bunch of squeeze pages and and um, I keep recording, nothing's happening. I'm like, well, did you post the links? Mm -mm, nope, nope, didn't do that. Okay, well, you gotta do that. So, so I'm gonna go to Facebook and I'm not, um, I'm just gonna show you how I would do this. So we're gonna pretend this is my listing or, or another agent's listing that I'm promoting. I'm gonna go to my um, business page for Facebook. And it, when I have Zoom and KB Core and Facebook running, it's always a little extra slow. Oops. And um, we're gonna just paste this little link in there. Mm, it's not fetching the preview, hang on. I'm gonna hit refresh. Didn't. When it doesn't say fetch preview, don't even bother. Hopefully this is gonna work and it's not gonna give us duck. I'll let it load. I'll try to be patient. I'm not great at that. Paste. Oh, there, yay, it's fetching the preview. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It always sucks when you're trying to do it and then it doesn't work when I'm doing the training. I'm like, I really, you guys, it really does work. But see how slow it is? Holy. Okay, so there's the beautiful listing. It's lovely. And now I can say lovely things about it. Oh, lovely listing for you to look at today. <laughs> um, you're going to say something good, though. Okay, you're going to say something wonderful about this. And you're going to put, like, emojis and, you know, 
you're going to put like smiley faces and house emojis and checkses and, you know, check boxes and, you know, alarms and, you know, whatever. You're going to do Facebooky things, all right, to just draw attention because that does work. Oops, that does work. And then you're going to go down here. And now you can, I'm going to post it. I'm just going to post it. And let's say I'm, I open up that link and I'm like, oh, I want to see that. And here I can enter my email address or I can just continue with Facebook. I'm already on Facebook. I might as well continue with Facebook. To, and I'm saying, no, I don't want to, I don't want to give you my cell phone number. I'm just going to just let me in here so I can see that listing. What I, and it always takes a little minute. It's kind of a drag. So there it is. And now I can view this beautiful listing. Ooh, that is super nice. Um, and then I'm, our, I'm logged in now as a user on her website. And um, I can save properties. I can create my own search alerts from here. Okay, now let's go to KV Core and see what happened. I'm a new lead. I'm gonna go to the Smart CRM. So there's the new lead. And I want you to notice it's going to take a minute for whatever reason this has been happening lately but two hashtags were added Facebook buyer and 6100 Baker Dairy now it will it will start a campaign in a little bit for whatever this just started happening about two weeks ago it decided it's gonna take a little it's time showing up but it will so we'll probably have to come back to it so I can show you that but it will yeah, it did. Remember how I said it's going to take a minute for whatever reason? So let's look at, um, remember my lead when we first went to Facebook buyer and, and we, we created the Facebook buyer campaign and we, we created the squeeze page to look at this beautiful listing with Facebook buyer on it. So here it is. So it says hashtag was added Facebook buyer. The other hashtag that was added was the address, the, our little hashtag that we created as an address. Now maybe this type of hashtag for your listing is what you want to do. Maybe you want to use the MLS ID. I don't know. That's up to you. Um, and, and it says, look, it says campaign added Facebook buyer campaign. Well, the contact met hashtag is Facebook buyer and it was assigned the campaign Facebook buyer campaign. Isn't that fun? And it shows you what the person looked at. And then you can see, oh, eight upcoming touches, future touch points. And you can see what's going to go out. You can see, okay, they're going to get this text message. If you don't want them to get the text message because you like already know this person or something, I don't know, you could click the trash can. Or you could just not worry about it and let it go. And then you can see everything that's going to happen here. What we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, Mr. Seller, your listing's going live on the MLS tomorrow. And guess what? I do some awesome marketing. And one of those things is that I'm gonna create a property website just for you. It's gonna be your own listing website and I'm gonna send it to you tomorrow and um, I want you to look for that. And I'm gonna actually send it to you in Facebook Messenger or I'm gonna email it to you or I'm gonna text it to you, whatever you wanna tell them. And then what you're gonna do is you can text this link to your friends and family. You can email it to your coworkers. You can share it on Facebook. In fact, do all those things and let people know that you have a listing that many times it's a, a, a friend or family member who refers your house to somebody they know and helps you sell it. Did you know that happened? And so, and so just promote, let everybody know you're super excited about the next chapter of your life and let's, you know, get more exposure on your listing. Won't that be great? <laughs> and then you are going to create something for them. It's going to be something nice. Do you know what it is? you're going to create for them their own single property website. Okay. So we're going to go back to our lead engine and create that single property website. Oh, sorry. There's the listing ID rather. And I'm going to put the source, I'm going to put the source as seller. And you know, and I, so I have a whole source um, in my business analytics that just say seller. So I can see all the leads came in from this type of effort. I call it my seller share campaign. Okay. And so, and remember I did have um, the hashtag Facebook buyer, but instead of that one, I'm going to put seller share is the hashtag. And then I'm going to use the same um, listing ID because this is my listing and I definitely want to see any leads that I get from this. 
so that when we drop the price or we sell or we go off the market and come back on the market that I can find those leads with that hashtag. Okay, and I'm gonna create the link. This is a totally different link than I created before. And this is the link right here that I'm gonna be sending to my seller. Say, hey, here's your single property website or here's your listing website. Call it something magical, you know, your super duper listing website. Share it now on your Facebook or with your friends or text it or email it, okay? <clears throat> and then they're gonna get a special campaign when you do that. So are you all following me with this part? All right, so it's the same exact, same exact one, you know. Um, you could change it so that they're not forced to register to look at it. Um, you could change change it so that, um, you know, to, to default so they can look at that property and not even have to register. But then if they look at another property, then they have to register. You could set it up like that. You know, you just might not get as many leads, which is fine. It's fine. Um, but however you want to do it. So, um, Okay, cool. So what we're gonna do though is now we need to set up that campaign. And so we're gonna go to Marketing Autopilot. Because we don't want people to get, we don't want that, we don't want, you know, you know, your seller's Aunt Sue and your seller's, um, you know, neighbor down the street and your seller's uh, friend that she goes to church with, um, you don't want them to get the, the Facebook buyer campaign or the, the regular default buyer campaign, because it's so informal and like unfamiliar. We're creating more familiarity here. We're saying, hey, we're practically best friends now because we know people together. You know, that's what you're saying. So, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our smart, smart campaign and all we have to do, And once these campaigns are in here, you guys don't have to keep changing and we're just building, I'm showing you how to, how to you know, do this to get yourself going and then once it's done, it's done forever. So there's our Facebook buyer campaign. We're gonna take this Facebook buyer campaign and we're gonna use this as our skeleton for our seller share campaign. And so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clone this little baby and make a copy of it. Clone. All right, and we are going to, there's our copy. So we're gonna make this our seller share campaign. And so the first thing we're gonna do is this first text message that goes out that says, hey, I forgot to ask, are you just shopping or looking for something in particular? That's dumb. We don't want these people to get that text message. We're gonna delete that. And obviously the Facebook buyer intro email, that's not the one we want either. So we're gonna add our new action and that is um, our seller share intro email. It looks like this, like, hey, I noticed you viewed your friend's listing the other day, neatos. That's cool, we're best friends now, seller share um, campaign, our intro email, it's called. And we're gonna have this go the next day after they looked at the listing and add. And we're gonna leave everything else exactly the same, exactly. And now we're gonna edit this to say, no, don't, don't start when the hashtag's Facebook buyer, instead start when the hashtag is seller share. And we're gonna name this seller share campaign. And it activates when the seller share tag is added. Next. All right. Okay, you guys. Um, what do we have to do next? Because we need to prevent conversion default buyer campaign from running at the same time seller share campaigns one. So we definitely don't want, you know, the friends and family members of our seller to get the regular default conversion buyer campaign. We definitely want them to get this one. So what we got to do. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our conversion default buyer. <clears throat> And we're gonna tell this little baby it's not allowed to run when it sees the seller share tag. So we go edit, say add a trigger, hashtag is not seller share. Okay. 
And there we go. Uh, we now just prevented the default buyer campaign from running on top or along with the seller share campaign. So your, your you know, seller's best friend is only gonna get the seller share campaign. But what's great is you're gonna get like 30 new people in your database. And these are the people that as they keep getting your, your search alerts and property alerts because they looked at their friend's property, they might eventually just opt out and unsubscribe. You know, maybe they'll start also getting your newsletter you're gonna send and they might opt out and unsubscribe. But some of them are just gonna stick with you. And then one day, a year later, they're gonna reply back and say, hey, I, you just sent me this property and guess what? I wanna see it and I, I'm not pre-approved yet. Do you know a lender? <laughs> That's what's gonna happen, okay? Just FYI. The other thing I wanna talk to you about is your sphere. And that is we are gonna go into our marketing autopilot. Um, we're gonna go start a campaign. And we're going to look at the sphere campaign. I just want to tell you about it <clears throat> and how I change it and why. And then you can make your own decision. So the way that this default homeowner sphere campaign is, is that it's going to start anytime you put in any um, contacts, like a group of contacts in, and they're called your sphere. Um, whether they're a buyer or a seller, <clears throat> if they're marked as a buyer seller and they're in your sphere, then this comp campaign is going to automatically start. And that's great. Maybe you want that, but maybe you want to have more control. So, so a couple things. The first thing I want you to notice is <clears throat> it sends this email. It says, Hey, you know, so-and-so I've been showing a few homes in your area. I thought of you. I have a market report that I send out monthly, blah, blah, blah. I, I actually don't like that so much because it's just, um, it says, you know, I was driving by and I thought about you. I don't know if I was driving by because you know what? They might live in a different state <laughs> or they might live, you know, three hours away if they're in my sphere. And I don't like to say that I was driving by. So I get rid of that. So I'm going to modify this one right here. And I'm gonna add the new action that is my um, sphere intro email. And this one is basically the same one. It just says, I want to check in with you and see how things are going. And by the way, I have a market report. <laughs> and by the way, I'd love to catch up with you. You know, So I'm gonna just name this sphere intro email. And I'm gonna have this run on the day after I activate the campaign for them and add. You'll also notice that this first task here, it's just a task, and it just says check in or create a task for the content contact. We're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna actually add a task for ourselves. Remember that first template we added a long time ago, like an hour and a half ago? We're gonna add this task and it is called set up market report. And we're gonna run that on day one. And the rest of it we can just leave. Now you'll notice there's only like 18 touches in three years. <laughs> okay, that's not a lot for your sphere, right? Um, so hopefully they'll be getting some mail from you now and then, twice a year. I don't know, maybe you send out a monthly newsletter or 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 email or weekly, I don't know. Um but there's some other things we can do here and that's what I wanna show you when we're getting there. So um, the first thing I wanna do though is I wanna edit this. So for me personally, I don't want this campaign to just start if somehow they're in my sphere and they're marked as a buyer or seller. I wanna have more control. I want to decide when this campaign is gonna start for somebody. That's just me. You can, you can leave it this way, but let me show you what it looks like right now. When their status is sphere and not like new lead, not prospect, but it's sphere, and they're marked as a buyer and or seller, they're gonna get this campaign, okay? What I wanna do is I wanna have more control, okay? I'm gonna say when they're moved to a hashtag that I'm gonna add, 
when I add, when I manually add the hashtag sphere homeowner, that's when they're going to get this campaign. And I don't care if they're a buyer or a seller, they're anything. They're designed, they're everybody, they're all. So I'm gonna say, it's, this campaign's designed for anybody, all. And, and I'm gonna, this campaign's gonna start when I put the hashtag in, Sphere Homeowner. Okay, and, I, and so this is not a default campaign anymore, it's my custom campaign, so I'm gonna call it Sphere Homeowner Campaign. And it activates when Sphere Homeowner owner tag is added update so there it is start when sphere homeowner tag added okay okay so let's see what this looks like in action so um i'm going here at my smart crm i'm going to just clear the filter there and let's say i'm going to add somebody from my sphere so i'm going to go add a contact and i'm just going to add myself as a test You do want to enable the permissions for all of these kind of communications, email, call, and text. Um, the way this campaign is set up is that work for a buyer, a seller, it doesn't matter. How, however, you've got it doesn't matter if you've got them as a buyer or seller. I'll put it in as a buyer and seller, but the status is sphere. Okay? And, and that's all we're going to do. You can't add a hashtag in here. I wish you could. Now, I will say from here I could add that I want the Sphere Homeowner campaign to be added and start that now. That's one way I could do it, but I'm not going to do it that way and I'll tell you why. But let me add this contact first. So now we're in here as Sphere and remember this particular campaign is for anybody uh, that has the hashtag that is Sphere Homeowner, okay? And the campaign's in there, it's ready to go, and now I am going to add the campaign. Again, I could go here to campaigns and add the campaign with this drop down here, but instead, I want to add it with a hashtag. The reason that I want to do that is because there's no way in KB Core to just click on a campaign to see, here's all the people that are on this campaign, for example. What you could do though, is you could search a hashtag to discern who was on a campaign. Because if you used a specific hashtag to trigger a campaign, then if they have the hashtag, that means they're on the campaign or have had the campaign. So. I'm going to click add hashtag and I'm going to put in sphere home owner and I'm going to update the tag. Now, as you can see, the hashtag is there sphere homeowner and it automatically added the sphere homeowner campaign. Now I can, if I see future touch points. I can see here everything that I need to do. Um, the first thing is it's going to automatically send this email, but I have a task for myself and the task is to set up the marker reports. So let's do that. Now, just to reiterate, um, I could just enter a zip code or a city or a county here and then send a marker report for that market activity report every 28 days or every 21 days, 14 days, 7 days. If it's someone in your sphere, hopefully you know their address. So if you know their address, instead of adding a market report like that, what you're gonna do is you are gonna add the home address, okay? Not here under primary address, although you can, but what's important is this valuation section, okay? So I'm gonna add my address, and what's funny is this person, this um, particular agent who this is her KB Corp, she's in Florida, but you can set up a home valuation for anywhere in the U.S. Um, for a home. And so let's say if I have a client in a different state, 
or it's outside my MLS, I could put in their address and then guess what? Under market reports, it's going to send me, even from her, KB Core in Florida, it's going to send me my zip code um, home valuation and my home valuation every 30 days. So that just automatically happened. Okay, and the other thing I like to do for my sphere is to add an alert. This is a search alert of single family homes and condos, for example. It just depends on your area and what works for you. Um, of all the homes in a specific zip code. Um, and if this person's in my sphere, I would put that zip code. The problem is, if it is someone outside your MLS, you can't set up search alerts. You can for market reports, for valuations, but not for search alerts. You can't set up search alerts for somebody outside your MLS. So um, I put, could put a zip code here um, where that person lived and then set it so that just once a month they would get the listings that are in their zip code once a month. So, and then I could set that alert. So there you go, that's how that works. Okay, here's more actions. That's what I wanna do. I just wanna show you this for more actions. This is where you can like um, turn off behavioral al uh, alerts for a specific contact. You can also find this person on Facebook or Google if the, you know, based on their email address. Um, you can unsubscribe this individual person from your emails or texts and, and again, the behavioral alerts. You can merge the contact. You can transfer the lead um, to somebody else and then you won't see it anymore. But if you share the contact with somebody else, you'll also still be able to see it. Um, you can here, you have to add, if you wanna add a new task for a person, you can do it here. When you get the link to this template, what you're going to notice is it is a Google Sheet. You want to have a Google account be logged into, I don't know, your Gmail or YouTube account, what Google, your Google account somewhere. You're all going to have a Google My Business page, so you're definitely going to have a Google account. But as long as you have a Google account, you'll be able to access your Google Drive. And that's where this comes from. It comes from a Google Drive document. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go to File, and you're going to make a copy and then you're going to find the folder of whatever folder you want where you want this to go and you're going to select it and you're going to hit say okay and then it's going to be a copy okay and i'm going to run through this template briefly because there's actually a video right here and it says click here to watch a short video about how to use this template now since i made this video i have updated the look of the template a bit, but the idea is still the same. You will also notice in this template, when everything, when something is a link or it looks like it should be a link and you click on it and nothing's happening, like, well, this is a link and it says I should, nothing's happening. Notice these little hover um, links that hover over things. That's the link you're gonna click on to go somewhere, okay? So there's my YouTube video explaining how to use the setup template. Okay, I'm gonna click it off. There's also a video about how to make a copy of the document, okay? And I also have some prerequisites here. I even talk about opting into your KV Core website. I talk about using KV Core support and EXP Realty support um, and noticing the tabs here at the bottom of the page. So I've got the introduction, I've got a domain and agent profile, SEO and custom pages, campaign training, lead gen training, lead gen tools, social media tools. If you ever get lost and you don't know where to go, you can click here where it says go back to introduction page and click on the link to go back. You will notice here on the left-hand side, I also have links. So I'm gonna show you this. If I wanna go and if I wanna um, set up my, my website, okay? and I wanna get things started. I'm gonna go here to domain and agent profile. Notice I've got directions here for you. I read the directions. It says this section works like both a checklist and a reference guide for you as you're setting up your website. First, do this, then do this. Third, do this. <laughs> and I just tell you what to do. And so you're gonna go through this template and you're gonna do what I say. Um, this, you know, and, and, and what I said, and one of the things is, hey, watch 
the video in step one and then do the thing. So you're going to watch it and then you're going to go to your KV Core website and do it. Okay. And so you're just going to follow this line. I talk about domain forwarding and if you purchased your domain via GoDaddy, how to forward it. I talk about how to set up your agent profile. And again, you're going to click on the link. It's going to take you to the YouTube, my YouTube channel where I have all, you know, I explain how to do this stuff. Okay. And these are shorter videos, like 10 minutes long or eight minutes long. It just depends. And I tell you what to do to set yourself up. I don't, I can't remember if anybody said in here they were from Texas or not, but I actually have a little video here about how to make your KB Core website compliant in Texas, because you guys got to do different things. I also have like a introduction about a little article about how to write a good bio for your website. Here on SEO and custom pages, same thing. I say first, you know, watch the video and then do the thing. <laughs> Third, watch the video about editing your websites and then do it. Okay, so I have the directions for you exactly what to do. Okay, so you can set up your own website. You just have to follow it along. We're gonna go back to the introduction here and I want to point out some more stuff. I've got campaign training. So basically what I started teaching you about campaigns, guess what, it's all right here. And I tell you, you know, here's on the top the directions. Directions first, complete step one by watching the video activate default campaigns. So you're gonna watch this video and you're gonna do it on your website. You could, some people have told me they pause and then they go do it and then they pa play and pause and then they go do it. So however works for you. I also have this little guy. It's the document, that same um, campaign training document that I was using earlier that I was copying my templates from and pasting. So this is all my KB Core campaign copy and instructions. So not only do I have the copy, but I have a campaign and this leads to a whole campaign training playlist and with all the copy on it and all that good stuff. Um, and because you made a copy of this, by the way, because this is your own copy, you're going to be able to write yourself notes in here. So like use the column sections below to write yourself a note. You can say, well, like I added um, the, you know, default buyer and seller campaign so far. You know, if you just want to write yourself a note about something, you can do it right here um, because this is your own copy now that you're going to be able to edit and play with. All right. And then I have the whole, um, this whole how to customize, modify campaigns in KB Core. I have it for Facebook buyer campaign, seller share, sphere campaign, even a next door seller campaign. And you guys asked about agent attraction, didn't you? A, um, Phil did, agent attraction campaign. I have all about creating a uh, five email follow-up campaign for agent attraction. And that's in here. Uh, it's, it's in here for you. All right, so we're gonna go now. Um, there's also lead gen training. I've got these four videos here. These are two shorter videos. Where are my, my leads? Um, how to squeeze pages, hashtags, and campaigns work together in the CRM. Seven different types of squeeze pages that you can create along with a call capture code and what your smart number is and what that's doing. That's all here. Here's six lead generating tactics video. These two videos are each about 30 minutes long. These two are about 10 minutes long each. So, and, and I just tell you exactly what to do and how to do it. I want you to notice when you see anything bright yellow like this, those are little notes for me that are important. So it'll say here, by the way, since the recording of this video, Facebook made some changes. And so here's what you need to do. So it's just, you know, and so, and as you notice, I mean, hopefully Facebook is just doing something weird and it's still working the same way, but hopefully I don't have to change that note again. <laughs> All right. Um, so anyway, I've got more trainings here. Then there's also a social media training and somebody asked, hey, can you talk more about Google My Business page? Guess what? There's a whole training right here, a step-by-step -step article step-by-step -step guide for real estate agents to set up your my Google My Business page. This is how to create a Facebook business page and what to do with it. It's a video of me working with another eXp agent setting her Facebook business page up from scratch and showing her how to post stuff and what to post. 
here's an Instagram tools and training um, section. Here's a LinkedIn training section. I also have more videos on social media related lead gen efforts. And then finally, finally, last but not least on this is your lead gen tools page. This page is um, it, it, I show you that you can see, see these first 12 examples below. Here's some examples of squeeze pages you might create. Because remember I said when you are done with creating a squeeze page, those links go away forever and ever. <laughs> you don't see them again. You, you, you might want to save them somewhere because maybe you want to create it. So I have this one. This is a multi-property squeeze page. It's of adult 55 condos in Ottawa and Kent counties. I usually post it on Facebook and it's got two hashtags, Facebook buyer and adult 55. And I'm gonna post it on my business page and here's what the link looks like. So these are, this is just examples. And then um, you can use that as like ex things that you could create for yourself. So I just wanna show you what this looks like. So there's less and less, there used to be 12 and now there's some. But, so I can see that's what my results page looks like. I actually got a lead about, uh, from one, this one yesterday back to this so these are just examples and um you will see i've got all this space here you can put more so if you're you know if you don't if you're like okay i get it <laughs> i get it i'm just you can delete all this like okay i get what she's doing here so i'm just gonna go through and you know i'm gonna delete everything here as i get what she's doing and i'm just gonna do my own thing <laughs> i'm gonna put in my own things oh okay today i created a multi-property squeeze pages or you know and i and this is what it is and you know, this is the source and this is the hashtags, whatever. You can just do this yourself. So this is just, I give you these first 12 examples and you can follow them along. The other thing I have here is this little guy. It's your KB Core Digital Marketing Scheduler. And you click on this, it's going to take you to this document that you can download. And it is sort of a guide. If you're like, oh gosh, I don't know where to start with digital marketing. Uh, this is really too much to even think about. I don't know what to post with KB Core. This is sort of a, um, it just a, you know, a guide. So on Sunday, you can schedule like three posts that are going to just automatically, you can set it and forget it on KB Core. You know, this is what's going to happen on Monday, maybe, you know, maybe on Tuesday, you can do this. On Wednesday, you can do this. It's just sort of a guide um, that you can use to to follow to give you some ideas and maybe find your own flow or if you're like gee i should do some digital marketing today but i don't know what to do say well I, whatever this says for tuesday this week i'm gonna do <laughs> all right so so there it's it's a guide google squeeze page posting okay i would create a new squeeze page and i would call the source google just so that i could track it and then if i wanted to have a face you know a, a you know maybe i wanted to I didn't want to worry about a hashtag. I don't care. They're just going to get the, the regular, the regular default seller campaign or the regular default buyer campaign. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go um, Google my business. Here I can go to posts and I can just add an update. So let's say I want to add an update. I do. Okay, I'm going to add a photo. I'm going to select a photo from my computer. I have this little event I'm doing. There it is. I, I think I can call an event, but I'm afraid to. I'm afraid I'm going to screw. Oh, it is an event. Oh, I can add a button. Okay sign up okay so this is an event this is a lunch and learn actually for realtors and i'm going to say um how to help your clients diy their a remodel for a fraction of the oops of the price and um this is going to be how do i change this hold please the date is the 11th, and that is also the end date. <laughs> we'll do at a time. We're going to do 10 a.m. to noon, 12 p.m. OK. 
Okay, hopefully that's smart. Um, event details, a link for my button is there. Um, I will do this, okay. I'll take that, copy, and I'm gonna put event details here. I don't know, hopefully it's not too long. And I'm gonna preview it. Ooh, look at that, that's nice. Okay, and publish. Okay, there, I just posted. Oh, it's too long. Okay. My event title is too long. Publish. There. All right, so that's one thing I can do. You can also do ads from here. So as far as a squeeze page, I mean, I, you know, you saw I could just post a link, but you can also do an ad, and I had one. Uh, I'll go to create an ad. And I had like a seller squeeze page, you guys, and that actually really worked pretty well. I was spending like $97 a month though, but I was probably getting like 35 seller leads, but not all, of, you know, your seller leads are gonna have addresses mostly. You might also get numbers in email addresses. It'll be half and half. Um, and, uh, but when you get an address, it's still an excellent lead. When you have just an address, you still have a great lead because you can find out with from RPR who the, who the owner is, you can mail them stuff, you can knock on their door. So it's still a good, you can find out what their phone number is with different tools. So anyway, here's an ad that I had, but I had to pause. What's my, what's my home worth West Michigan? And, um, and there you go. 